Um, something huge in science is about to happen in a few moments. You're going to read it in your evening news. I'm not referring to the cocktail party after this thing. I'm referring to um, the Rosetta probe actually landing something on a comet five million kilometers from here. And uh, why this is important is that it has to do something with peer review. Johannes Kepler, 400 years ago, was thinking about comets a lot. He just observed them on the sky. He had no hope of landing on them. But he observed the tail of the comet, sent a letter to a guy named Galileo Galilei, and just pointed out that <clears throat> provided ships or sails adapted to the heavenly breezes, and there will be some who will be brave to ever, uh, to, even to that void. So that was the original form of peer review. A scientist sending a letter to another scientist. I have this idea. What do you think about it? The story doesn't tell, but probably Galileo said that the idea is probably correct about comet tails being caused by the heavenly breezes. It took us 400 years to actually build a machine that can sail on those heavenly breezes, but we did it. And now we're actually landing on another place. However, exchanging email letters between, between scientists soon gets uh, burdensome if there's lots of scientists. And only 50 years later, a man named Henry Oldenburg had a problem. He wanted to stay abreast of all the current science being done in Europe, partly because he was the secretary of this very institution here, but also because he was probably a Dutch spy. However, he noticed that he can't do it anymore because there was an ever-expanding number of scientists and more and more papers being prepared, much like today. So his idea was to create a journal. People would send all their research to him, and he would then look into and ask a few colleagues to ascertain them. If we look at the, the front page of that uh, first journal, although the French will disagree with you, they have another one they claim is earlier, but that's French. Uh, it says, giving some account of the present undertakings, studies and labors of the ingenious in many considerable parts of the world. You can see already here that what makes a scientific journal. It's the present undertakings, labors and studies. Not something that was done a year ago, or probably was, but a long time ago. It's what's happening right now in science. It's in many considerable parts of the world not only in the Queen's realm, but in the wider parts of the world. It's international. But what really sets this publication apart from all the other publications is this part. It's work of the ingenious. But herein comes the problem. And also something that I think we're in danger of forgetting. Um, I'm getting ahead of me. The, the reason I'm highlighting this is that this is something that we're in danger of forgetting with all these new peer review initiatives, including my own. Peer review is not there for, to help the authors to improve their manuscript, although it will do that if it's done properly. Peer review is not there to provide a platform where an expert can confirm his expertise or a junior scientist can confirm, confirm and then start to build a name for himself or herself. Although peer review can do that if it's done properly. Peer review is not there to let publishers make more money, although it can help in doing that if it's done properly. Peer review exists for the readers, so that the readers can know that the stuff that they read is by the ingenious. And that's why, what's the purpose of peer review. However, peer review is not always doing what it should do. I'm not a native speaker, um, so I'll quote a few eminent British gentlemen. Um, in a short while, <laughs> sorry, I'm mixing my slides here. But peer review was the, is one part of the journal, but there are other things that have become established in journal publishing. Submissions are exclusive. And the word submission brings another image in my mind since I'm a dog owner. And uh, exclusive nomination of peers. 
if we think back a few years ago to the arsenic life saga, where uh, science published a paper saying that there is a new form of life on the planet, uh, after publication, Rosie Redfield pointed out that that's not really true. There's a big problem in methods. There were plenty of other people also who noted that. And that was not spotted by the two reviewers that science asked. There's exclusive use of the reviews. Another eminent uh, journal called Nature published a, more, a much more tragic story of a staff paper which had been peer-reviewed before in other journals where the methods and the problems had been spotted, but they were not spotted in the Nature Review, and they published it. So these things have become an established part of, of, of scientific publishing. Richard Horton, the editor of Lancet, is famously quoted saying that um, peer review is biased, unjust, unaccountable, incomplete, easily fixed, often insulting, usually ignorant, occasionally foolish, and frequently wrong. Another British gentleman, called Richard Smith, the ex-editor of BMJ, has been writing papers with, a t uh, with titles like The Woeful Tale of Uselessness of Peer Review, or Peer Review, A Flawed Process at the Heart of Science, and journals. Why is this? Why do we have these complaints about peer review and why, what are the root causes under the, underneath them? There's probably many, but some of these are that uh, probably peer reviewers are feeling that they're doing housework. It's just a chore that they're requested to do and expected to do as part of a duty, but it doesn't really build your academic recognition. It doesn't promote you in any way, it doesn't help. Maybe you get to learn new ideas, but that's all. There's an appointed authority, the editor, who nominates just two or three judges who are then making, uh, giving judgment of the paper, and the editor makes a decision based on those. And what if you fail as a reviewer? What if you write a really badly justified five lines of review, you totally fail as a reviewer, what is the consequence? Maybe that editor or that journal, or if you're lucky, that publisher will never ask you to review again. On the other hand, if you're an excellent peer reviewer, what are the consequences for that? So what I'm trying to say here that whether you fail or excel in peer review currently has very little impact, and therefore people have not much incentive to avoid failure and try to strive for excellence. That's what we try to do in period of science, fix some of these issues. We want to give authors some ownership. And, uh, and, and I want to say that I, I'm, I'm, I'm running a company that offers services for publishers. Obviously, I want all of you to come and buy it from me. But if you don't, you can still apply these within a journal without buying it from, buying it from period of science. You can give authors some ownership of the project. You can give reviewers some ownership of the peer review process. You can let everybody, uh, uh, you can give everybody to have a choice on anonymity, whether you want to be anonymous or not, and towards whom. You need to judge the peer reviewers, make it matter to them whether they write an excellent peer review or a failure. And a lot of concurrent consideration of journals. Why do we really need to have an uh, iteration down the journal prestige ladder, one rejection at a time? Why couldn't journals use a well-done peer review concurrently and make decisions based on that? Or if you can't go that far into the revolution direction, at least share the peer reviews with other journals so that that work doesn't go into waste. So if we're comparing the methods in period of science and old in, in the old Henry's method, we don't really know how long a peer review process takes in old Henry's method, except that we know that it's going to take a long time. In period of science, we let the author decide how long the peer review process is going to last. They can just simply click and point and choose the deadlines for their own process. 
We ask the author to make the trade-off between a quick process where the reviewers are going to be hasty and you're not going to get very many reviewers, or allowing them a bit more longer time to make their, uh, make their reviews. Authors, on average, choose about 20 days and get, on average, 2.5 peer reviews. Who reviews, in all Henry's method, is decided by the editor by soliciting reviews. In peer to science, we allow that and we, we endorse that. But in addition, we allow peers in peer to science to engage freely on peer reviews that are ongoing. So they decide, this is something that interests me. This is something that I'm an expert in. I'm going to be a peer reviewer on that. As a result, we don't, we, we don't only have one or two reviewers. Sometimes we have up to six, eight peer reviewers on a manuscript. Quality control in old Henry's method rests on the, the assumption that editor knows who the reviewers are. And that worked fine for hundreds of years. But now there's so many scientists around that editors often rely on the author provided list of suggested reviewers. Many journals even mandate that submission has to include a list of suggested reviewers. Well, that can happen in period of science too. We let the, the editor to ask the identity of the reviewer, or if the reviewer doesn't want to disclose identity, the editor can always look at the, uh, the profile. But in addition, we ask the reviewers to evaluate each other. So everybody writes their peer review knowing that my colleagues are going to read this, judge me, and score me, and those scores are going to accumulate in my profile. If I want to get a good score and show that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good peer reviewer, I need to be diligent. I need to put time and effort into writing excellent peer reviews. And I think, although we're young and small, I can confidently say already that that has a big impact. We don't see those five-line, don't publish this paper, or this is excellent, reviews. They are structured and... Uh, uh, much more well thought than your average peer reviews in the traditional system. Also, these scores, as I said, accumulate in the profile, and now we're about to launch collaboration with Publons, which is a website for reviewers to, um, to register their uh, peer reviewing, so that uh, peers in peer science can register their, uh, their reviews in Publons. And of course, we're really looking forward, what we heard today, that ORCID might be also in the process of, of launching uh, something that allows uh, people to register the peer reviewing uh, efforts. And we're a member organization of ORCID and surely are looking forward to that too. Submissions in Old Henry's method are sequ sequential. You first submit to science, they reject. Then you go to nature, they reject. Then you try the proceedings of Royal Society. If you're lucky, it goes there, or then you continue down the ladder. In period of science, it's first concurrent. So journals who are participating in our select program have a bird's eye view of everything that's going on. The editors can anonymously, silently track a process that interests them. They, will, they can participate if they want to, but they don't have to. And they can make a proactive publishing offer to the authors at any, part of, at any point of the process. If the authors don't get any offers, or if they don't get offers but don't like those offers, they can then export the peer reviews either to journals that are part participating in peer to science in the Connect program, which now in uh, includes PLOS Biology and PLOS One. And just two weeks ago, in our, we, we announced a collaboration with Springer. Their entire journal portfolio of, of about 3,000 journals is now available for authors in peer to science for exporting the peer reviews there. We're working together with their transfer desk so that the submissions from period to science go to transfer desk, the authors can indicate their preferred journals, and then the process continues there. Editors, of course, have full freedom to decide whether and how they want to use the peer reviews from period to science. They often want to arrange one additional round of peer review or, or just get somebody to, to confirm all the statistics or so forth. Thank you, and that's all.